Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Hello and welcome to this episode of our show. This is your host, Keith Doherty. Today, our special guest is top real estate managing broker Penny McLaughlin of John L. Scott Real Estate based out of Paulsbo, Washington. Penny began her real estate career while still in her teens by assisting her mother, whom she describes as a hard teacher and a successful agent in in upstate New York. By the age of 18, she was a licensed realtor, and her career trajectory might have gone uninterrupted except for the fact that she married and began a family. To her, real estate is not work, but a means of helping people, and she has worked hard over the years to increase her own knowledge. She is a star power star a designation given to only 150 realtors nationwide that represents both her achievement as a realtor and her dedication to continuing education. And she recently became a certified distressed property expert to help people avoid foreclosure whenever possible. Eventually, she started her own business, which she called Penny's Team. In order to prevent what she calls split loyalties, she represents only sellers while her buyer specialists represent only buyers a system that she believes works to best serve her clients. She is now with John L. Scott Real Estate, and she is a visible part of life on the Kitsap Peninsula. Her awards include the CDPE, or Certified Distressed Property Expert, 2009 to present, Best of West Sound, 2013 and 14, and Five Star Professional Real Estate Agent, 2015, to name a few. All right, with all that said, Penny, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. I'm glad to be here. Hey, Penny, if we could start for our listeners, what led you into real estate? Was it something that you always knew you wanted to do, or did you maybe stumble into it? No, my mother was a realtor, so I grew up with it for many years and started working with for her at a very early age. And um, after school, got my license and joined her. She was a very tough teacher. Yeah, I can imagine that, you know, it's it's interesting. You you like you said you're almost kind of raised into it like it, you know, it was just kind of ingrained into you as as you, as the normal way of life. That's for sure. Yeah. Um can you talk a little bit about uh what personal attributes, traits or qualities you think have most contributed to the success you've had in real estate? Well, my background before uh, starting real estate is when I had my children, I dropped out of real estate knowing that I would always go back. But I was a foster parent for adolescent foster children. Our home was the last home, the last stop before an institution or the first stop out of an institution. So our kids were teenagers and very hardcore kids, and my own children were like ages one and two when we started foster care. So I then returned to real estate and ceased foster care after 13 years and 313 kids. But it's just helping people, and real estate is the same attitude, helping people. Yeah, wow, that's that's uh, pretty commendable. I mean, that's a lot, you know, over 300 children that you were able to help, so that's, uh, that's, that's pretty impressive that uh, you, you did that. It was great training for real estate, believe me. Yeah, I would, you know, having children, obviously not having 300 come through my house, but I, I can definitely relate to, uh, you know, raising children in general, how it can definitely set you up for uh, some of the skills you'll need and in, in especially dealing with people and negotiating with different personalities and things because it seems like my teenage girls have many different personalities that I have to try to deal with. That's correct. And I had girls 10 at a time and my own two boys, which were 12 kids and even dozen. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So do you think you'd give our listeners uh, an example of when your traits have played a role in your path towards success? My traits are basically helping people. I never, ever look at the amount of commission. My real estate is based and my entire team has the same thought and we all base ourselves on help the people get the house, the money will follow. Yeah, I think that's a a great thing you said. And a lot of our guests, uh, you know, on this show, primarily uh, for me, we talk to a lot of real estate uh, agents and brokers like yourself. And and, uh, it seems like the the major um, common denominator is definitely 
that um, first and foremost that you're not you know focusing on the money that it's it's about you know engaging the person building a relationship finding out what they need providing value and service to them and like you said the the money and the commissions are like a byproduct of helping somebody achieve or find exactly what they want that's exactly right i've never ever operated on i'm the number one real estate agent blah blah but i do on penny and her team have helped x number of people move this year no, I think I think that's great. So, um, I think with with success, obviously, you know, not everything is always a, a smooth road, and and everything's you know perfect. So, can you talk a little bit about some of the adversities uh, or trials that you had to overcome in order to achieve your goals and have the success that you've had? Learning that you can't help everybody. And that is a trait that has been the hardest for me because I want to please and I want to help everybody. And sometimes you just can't do that. That has been the hardest thing for me to learn, and I'm continually learning it. And I, I guess when you, you know, when these obstacles come up or, or, or issues come up or things that, 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 that happen like that, what, what keeps you going? Why don't you give up what you're driving for? It's in my blood. I've been doing it for like 29 years, almost 30 years. I love what I do. I've never worked a day in my life since I've been in real estate. Excellent. And I guess kind of looking forward, you know, what do you see as your vision uh, for your business and your career say, over the next three to five years? The next three to five years, I would like to learn to take time off. I would like to learn to not work 100% of the time. And I have just bought a vacation home, and I am going to learn to take more time off. Excellent. And what is the, you know, kind of on top of that, what do you feel, I guess, or, or you know, and looking back on all the success that you've had, what, what do you feel is the best way that you've marketed or market yourself as a real estate professional so that you can have that continual growth? It's helping the number of people, the number of people that you've helped, keeping in touch with your past clients. I do a monthly mailing, and it has to do with uh, animals or kids, and it's just a simple, colorful postcard to keep in touch with my past clients, and that's how I get referrals. Excellent. And I think sometimes when... Um from a general public perception standpoint, when, when people look at real estate agents, they, you know, there are many different uh, things that come to mind on what they think and what they perceive. So what do you think the biggest misconception or myth that people have about working with a real estate agent is? People, the general public, some of the general public will put realtors in the same category as used car salesmen. So I think that I am always on climbing up an uphill battle. Uh, I offer service to my clients, such as the fact I have a moving truck, a full-size moving truck that I loan free of charge to my clients for life. If they want to move a refrigerator to their sons or their daughters, they're welcome to use my truck. That gives me a lot of advertising. It gives me a moving advertisement, but also it's a service to my client. And I always look for services to my client, client appreciation party, something that I can do that is above the normal. Oh, I think that's a great idea. I mean, that's, you know, from a, a realtor standpoint, you know, people are moving. I mean, that's what you're facilitating a move. And so to have that truck that you could let people use and not only just during that initial move, like you said, as a for life, if they ever need something, I think that's that's a great way to, uh, you know, stay front of mind, you know, and stay where you're, you're, you're providing value continuously. If somebody ever needs it, they're going to think, oh, we'll just go ahead and, and uh, we'll call Penny and we'll borrow the truck and we'll go ahead and move our stuff. And I use it for community service as well, for baseball teams, for uh, theater plays, moving their stage sets. It is, it's a moving billboard. Excellent. And let's say, Penny, you get a, a call from a, a family member or a friend, and they're in another state, and they basically they want to sell their home. And they know, obviously, you've been in the business for 29 years, and, and you can obviously provide them with some, some really good advice. So what advice would you give them about selecting an agent that could best serve their needs, kind of like you make sure you take care of your clients? What would you tell them to look for in an agent that could take care of them? Well, basically, I find out where they're going, and I will interview the agent for them. It may take me two or three agents before I find an agent that answers my questions the way I want them answered, and then I refer my client to that agent. 
Excellent. And and what are the what kind of things I guess would you be looking for? You know, when you talk about interviewing, what kind of what kind of things would you qualities and 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 things would you look for? I look for attitude. I look for are they helping their clients or are they helping themselves? Excellent. And obviously, uh, Penny, if, if somebody needs uh, real estate services in the area that you service, which what, what part of Washington do you cover? What's the general area? We're the country near the city of Seattle. We're across from downtown Seattle, seven miles by ferry. And so um, we can live with our keys in our car and our house unlocked. And we're yet very 35 minutes from all the crime and culture you want. All the, I like that. All the all the crime and culture you want. That's great. So, if someone needs your assistance in in your area, what's the best way they can get in touch with you and find out how you can help them? They can email me uh, Penny at theoriginalpenny dot com, and my website is theoriginalpenny dot com. Excellent. Well, Penny, we obviously want to thank you for taking time out of your schedule to come and, and share all your real estate professional experience with our listeners. And if you want to learn more about Penny, you can visit her site, like she said, theoriginalpenny.com. And also below this interview, we'll have a link to her website and any other contact information we have so that you can go ahead and check her out and see if uh, you guys would be a good fit to work together. So with all that said, everybody, until our next show, have a great day, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you, Keith. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.